Hey guys, this is the second part of the anamorphic projection tutorials that show you how to uh, place your, your viewpoint and then how to see your vector image from that viewpoint and finally how to project it. So this is the, the one where I'm going to show you once you've already set up your viewpoint, how to be able to see the vector image that you've created from that particular view. Okay, so if you remember at this point, what we have done is we've created uh, an avatar or just a vertical line that represents our eye height and we've created a camera. We've placed a camera that is um, that shows us what that view is from that view towards uh, any particular uh, point in the room. Okay, so and this line here represents that and we have saved that view as a view uh, in our uh, viewports. Okay, so we have that set up and we have our vector line work here on the side. So now we have to place this vector line work so that it is uh, basically uh, sitting perpendicular to this uh, view angle um, so that we can see it from this view as we look in this direction, okay? Um, and in order to do that, the easiest thing to do is actually just to draw, start out by drawing a line along one of your axes, okay? So I have ortho turned on, as you can see here. And so now I'm going to uh, just draw uh, a line that the length is not really that important along one of my axes. And now I'm gonna grab my vector line work and I'm gonna try to grab as close to the center of this vector line work as, as I possibly can. In my case, it's fairly easy because I have uh, a cube. Uh, so I'm gonna select uh, this point here, which is the center of my object. And based off of that, I'm gonna place that point somewhere along this line that I have drawn, okay? And so once you've done that, the next thing to do is to take your, uh, your line work and orient it uh, so that it is parallel uh, to that line and on the same plane. So, so far we are on the same plane and we are, we are but we're right now, our drawing is perpendicular to that line. So I'm gonna just rotate this with a simple rotation uh, based off of once again, this point. And I'm gonna grab a, a point uh, on this, along at this bottom of the, of the rectangle sorry, of the cube. And now I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. And so now you can see that my line work is in a sense oriented parallel to this line, okay? And the next step in, in here now is to rotate this so that it stands vertical perpendicular to this uh, line, okay? And in order to do that, I'm gonna grab my vector line work again, but this time I'm gonna type rotate 3D and I'm gonna select my midpoint again, but now I'm gonna select my rotation angle. And so I'm gonna select um, a, an axis that is perpendicular to the one that I have my line onto, and I'm gonna rotate my object 90 degrees vertically, okay? So as you can see now, my line work is situated perpendicular and centered along this line that I have created. So once I've done that, now I can group these two. And that way, whenever I move this vector, I'm also moving my line work. So that would be the first step, okay? Um, the next step is to create a kind of three-dimensional rotational uh, uh, sphere so that I can rotate this uh, along all different axes in a controlled fashion. So in order to do that, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my circle tool and based off of one, either one of the endpoints, but in this case, because this thing is oriented so that I can look at it from this point towards this direction, I'm gonna select this one. And I, I'm gonna grab my circle tool and I'm gonna create a circle with a one foot uh, radius, right? And I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna select in place uh, and I'm gonna rotate this 3D based off of this rotational axis and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, right? So now I'm starting to see the, this sort of base 
underpinnings of a kind of a three-dimensional sphere, rotational sphere, right? And I'm going to do the same thing again, copy in, in place and rotate 3D. But in this case, I'm going to select this axis and I'm going to nine, uh, rotate that 90 degrees. And so now you see all three axes based off of this center space and we have a, a, a sort of a sphere, right? So I'm going to grab all those and I'm going to group those. And now I have this, my vector line with my drawing on it and my rotational uh, sphere. And I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to group. Okay. Now I'm ready to move this and try to position this along this viewing vector that I have, right? So in order to do that, the first thing to do is just to grab it and move it. And I know that this point is going to go here, right, where my viewpoint is. And now I have to just rotate this vector so that it aligns with this one, right? So if I type rotate, regular rotate, you'll see here, I select that point, I select my end point of my vector, and now I can rotate it so that it is parallel or aligned to my viewing angle, right? But as you can see, it is aligned to it, but it doesn't coincide with it because this thing, which I, we've selected, that viewing angle is looking down, right? So now we have to get this view to sort of rotate shift down so that it aligns with this one, right? And so the, that last step that I have to do, and that's why I need this uh, rotational sphere, is to rotate this thing three-dimensionally. Okay, so this might take a little bit of playing around with, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna click rotate 3D and you're gonna select that your viewpoint and then you're gonna select the intersection here that is perpendicular of the other two um, circles that are not aligned, right? So that is the axis of rotation. And now you're gonna then select your line and you're gonna bring it down so that it hits and aligns with the other line, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and, and you can see here that now uh, my vector with my image is aligned to my viewport, okay? Just to clarify, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. So uh, that last one requires a, a rotation in three dimensions, right? So you have uh, your your line work, again, you're going to type in rotate 3D and you're going to once again select that point at your viewpoint and you're going to select the intersection of your two circles that are perpendicular to your view direction, right? So this intersection right here. And now you're going to select your, the vector that is the one that has your drawing on it and you can just match it now to your viewpoint vector, okay? So now if I go and I go to my view set and I select my view, you can see, now I can see what my uh, projection would look like, right? What I would be looking at if I had it uh, placed as such, okay? So once you have this part, you might ask yourself, well, what if instead, actually, I want my, my uh, vector to be a different size relative to this viewpoint and this, uh, this projection? So at that point, all you have to do is actually ungroup this, your, your, your vector line work from your vector line. So I'm going to click ungroup a couple times and now that is loose and I can actually just move this along so long so far as I'm moving it along my vector line if I move it closer to my viewpoint right now when I go to my to see my view you'll see it's a bit larger now if I'm if I do that a lot more and I once again look at that view you'll see now it's very large, right? So in this case, now, maybe this is the one that I want to select because this at this projection scale, my 
uh, line work would hit the, the floor and it would hit this wall and it would hit this and the glass. So it would hit lots of pieces and create a kind of very interesting anamorphic projection. Okay, so that is how you set your vector line work uh, relative to the view that you have selected. And remember, what's really important is that once you've set it, you can ungroup it and you can move your, your vector line work to change the scale, but you have to make sure that you move it along this, the vector that you've selected. If you move it off plane, then yeah, you might move it to a place where you can no longer see it from this viewpoint, okay? So that is the second part of the anamorphic projection tutorials.